Um, what did the skeleton order at a bar? Hmm. A cocktail and a mop. <laughs> that's good. You're this welcome. Is, My, work here, My work here is done. My work here is done. This is quality. That's, there you go. <laughs> quality content. Yeah. Welcome to the Pedagogy Hypothesis Episode 9, our penultimate episode before Ooh, closing fancy this. Words, Patrick. It's like I teach language arts or something. Um, <laughs> yes, it's the ninth episode. We're doing 10 total. And so today is, we're talking about conflict resolution, which is going to be a kind of a, <clears throat> it's pedagogy in the idea that. Hold on, I'm this. Keep talking. All right. Um, <laughs> Conflict resolution is pedagogy in the idea that like we're setting up a really good learning environment for our students. We are doing our the whole like social network thing to try to get these students to be on each other's teams a little bit more. It's going to be way different depending on which perspective you come from. I got yep. the I got the younger students, you got the older students. Yep. Ultimately like the thesis of this is that like over on the K through 8 side of things a little bit into high school, we're talking more about how we can facilitate that. Hello. Um Hi. <laughs> How we can facilitate that conflict resolution, and then on your side of things, it's more like... How you aren't allowed to. Yeah, get out of the way and figure out what's going yeah. on. 12.30 a.m. That is That's a significant a time. Yeah. Yeah. I was I'm asleep. asleep at that time. Yeah. Cool. I'm good from like, I'm good from like 9 a.m. to like 7 p.m. That's, that's really that's, good. That's still ample time. I'm like, mm, 10 o'clock, that's done. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's up, Willie? All right. What up? So let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about some things. We... Okay. We will save the live. We always do for 24 hours, yep. and it's on Nexus as well. Yeah, that is the that is the Psy Community YouTube channel. Yep. We're a little little struggling based on internet things to get those things out, aka me. It's all me. It's a completely my fault. If it was up to me, though, they would literally never be out. All right, well, so. <laughs> take what we can get then. Yeah. All right, you so. You right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why do we care about conflict resolution? Because conflicts happen all the time in education. Between who? Oh, man. Um, between everybody. Between everybody, right? Nobody's um, happy. <laughs> yeah. So I specifically today want to talk about conflicts between educators and mentees or students because... Okay, so... Those, all right. Because we can't do anything about... Again, this is a difference between yeah. K through 8 and university level um, is that we can't do anything about conflicts between people. Um, people. As in your students. Okay. As in not you. Mm. External to you. There we go. Um... So, conflicts happen all the time. Yeah. And we also have the added level for <clears throat> university. Sorry, I just, like, inhaled my lunch. Um, on the university level, we also have conflicts between professors or mentors and, like, graduate students, for example. Yeah. And that's have... a different kind of conflict that we also need to address. Um, you have an Instagram, but you don't have a Twitter. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't tweet. I just okay. eat. Oh, I just eat. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I just inhaled my lunch. Oh, okay. my gosh. Never change. Wow. <laughs> okay. You, you don't have Twitter. So you didn't right. really see it, but there was a really big trend this week about like how PIs, pr uh, principal pr investigators. Pr yeah, I always thought it was like principal instructor, but like no, not at all. You're learning shit. You're researching. I'm, I'm learning. Okay, I'm learning about these. Learn mm -hmm. anyway. So there was a big trend on on Twitter this week, at least within the academic circles that I follow, of like what makes a really good PI or what what kind of training PI should go through to be a PI, not just like not just a instructor Researcher? yeah like what what really separates a good pi from another one and i feel like this is going to be one of those skills that like one every person who is around children like i'm literally talking about children not just students but anybody who's around students is empowered with i really hope i really hope that this one does something yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's tricky all right so why do we do conflict resolution for a lot of different things um you left your coffee on the ground i did but i can get it with my feet don't, you can't see this on the street. No. Wait, oh, this like is we have idea. electronics? Patrick, this is a terrible idea. No, this, you're a terrible idea. I got oh, it. Okay. All right. We're really good friends, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. Okay. okay. All right. So why do we do conflict resolution? For a few different reasons. Um, on my side of things, with the younger, with the younger ones, um, because so much of their development is tied to their social interactions, we need to make sure that those interactions are good or at least bearable with each Solid other. Solid thought there. I, it makes sense. Like, that's, yeah, no, seriously, like. It makes sense. Um, especially, <laughs> we've talked about how a lot of student-centric classroom, to bring, finally bring this all full circle again, a lot of the student-centric classroom is allowing students to teach each other or to use each other's areas of expertise or, like, their own talents and the way that they can talk to each other to allow that to be a principal driver of instruction. And so they need to be able to work together. Right? Or they need to at least be able to talk to each other in a constructive way. 
And when they don't, when they can't trust each other, or when they're fighting with each other, because again, when you're 12 or 13, the I don't really like that person. That is such a like that's all that exists. Yeah. Even I mean, I'm 29. You're 28. Like. We still do that sometimes. I don't like that person. I'm not going to go to their store. I'm not going to do whatever. Yeah, well, I do that on like a much more political level now. Yeah. <clears> yeah. <throat> yeah. Speak with your dollars. Just exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So when, I guess if we're going to think about like why this stuff matters, can, can you maybe either give light or tell stories to where you've seen this negatively impact people in, in college education? Yeah. So I am going to... I think the most negative, that's not like, I don't, I don't want to put levels on this, but yeah. like one of the negative um, situations that I've seen come to fruition really recently is in graduate school um, and when graduate students and their PIs have a conflict. Um, and this is another example of when I think it's important to remember that in university levels, you have to outsource these things. Um, so before I get started on like any narratives or any stories, I want to talk about the resources that most universities have to resolve conflicts. Mm -hmm. So there is usually actually an office of conflict resolution. Like that in and of itself is a thing. Is it, sorry to interrupt, is it titled that? Like, yes, usually. Okay. I mean, they're all like a little bit different. Like a lot of places yeah. also have like a teaching and learning institution. A lot of them have like a resource That's center, you know, like hidden within some other thing. Yeah. It'll know? usually have conflict resolution somewhere in there. And that is where you can anonymously submit stories or non anonymously submit stories of conflict. Um, and that person will act as a liaison between the person you're having a conflict with and mm -hmm. yourself. Okay. Um, so that nothing bad can happen to you as a consequence because everything is in writing and it's through the specific office. Um, another resource you have that you should be aware of is some version of counseling and psychiatric services um, and most universities have this and that's where you can go if you're feeling like you have conflict and you're not ready to discuss it with the other person yet um, and that resource should be available to you for either like therapeutic purposes or for psychiatric purposes potentially um, and you can be anonymous or non-anonymous as well through that resource. Another resource that most universities have is a disabilities resource center so if you are having conflicts that you think are a function of some source of disability, you can also go through that resource. Um, and then of course your peer to peer network, which is not like a yeah. formal center. Um, but those are the, the resources that most universities have available for you that are formal and through some sort of an office. And then you also obviously have your emotional support system of your mm -hmm. friends and your family and whatnot. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, but I've seen, oh, sorry. When we were planning this episode, did we talk about residence life at all? That's the only thing I can contribute to college stuff is. No, go for it. Um, okay, so it's like, not on our very yeah. So this like, this is not about like PI student, but rather student student or roommate. Okay. okay. Because like I mean, a lot of, a lot of college students will either if you're in dorms, you have somebody that you were living with sometimes for the first time, um, especially for the first time in your adult life, uh, and so residence life, your RA, your whatever, there's they're different from from school to school what their title actually is. But if you have a if you have some kind of conflict within residence life, so within the dorms, within management, whatever, there are plenty of opportunities and it's going to be different from school to school. Um, talking to somebody like your resident director or res like resident advisor is a good resource as well. It's less formal. It's definitely not an institution. It's still just talking to a person, um, but then they can at least help you find the resources that you're looking for. Yeah. Higher up the chain. Yeah. Okay. So we have these, we have these institutions <clears throat> on the K3 side of things. It is, the teacher, say, principal, the and then it's like, yeah. I'm the institution. Yeah. I hate that. That was too much. That was um, a lot of like... Was, yeah, aggressive, t aggressive <laughs> masculinity. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there are the in these institutions. They all do different things. Mm -hmm. um, they all seem to be in the position of helping. Correct. Um, or facilitating. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, facilitating. <laughs> and we're not... We're not talking about like getting either campus safety or actual police involved. We're we're talking about just like how to resolve a conflict. Yeah, mm. correct. Um, you can get those authorities involved if you need to, but that's not usually the case if you're going to a place like that. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it's not that extreme yet. And and thankfully, I have never heard of nor been involved in a situation where you had to get authorities such as campus police involved for yeah. conflicts. Yeah. But they do happen, obviously, in universities, as we have learned in the last many, many years. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> as far as uh, why we're doing this again, I just saw one of our notes was like humanizing the students, which I don't think we've ever actually talked about before. <laughs> How your students really? might be like actual people. Uh, hey, it happens. 
Yeah. No, at least that explicitly. Yeah, I guess you know? yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah, and, and so... We talk about them as, like, things that you're trying to help. Yeah, but yeah, they're little vessels of knowledge. What but does it, imagine people complexly, right? Yeah. More than a nice hat rack. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> uh, that's a reference to a video I made and stuff. I'm not going to plug it, but you get it. That's a good one. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so, like, trying to imagine these students as more than just, like, things that you that will absorb the knowledge that you are putting in their brains. Um, there is a purpose to all this. So, yeah. good. All right, uh, we'll talk about, like, how to actually get those students that help and everything um, at the K through eight. Uh, some of the other reasons that you might be able to progress this conflict resolution, peer to peer is a big one, right? Again, like kids fight with each other. Like this is just, it's every day. Like I was gonna say, how frequently do you see- Oh my gosh! <laughs> some go multiple days at a time. Some I've solved like parent parent conflicts before. Ooh. It's like, it's a mess. And it, it does... Wait, is, is it your job to handle parent-parent conflicts? Oh, when it, sorry, I'm not going to turn this into a complaining session, but, like, yeah. Because they're the main... Well, I mean, people need to know. Like, yeah. If they're considering being a K-3 educator, sure, this that's, is part of the game, that's kid, fair. Right? That's fair. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's one of those things where, like, on paper it <clears> shouldn't be. But when you remember that, like, every... Like, everything that the parent can provide to a student is going to go back into... Oh, what's up, Brazil? Um, Howdy. <laughs> everything that the parent can, can provide is going to go into that student. And that is a team effort at raising that, that student to be the best, whether it is like academically and socially or whatever their spiritual life is, family, social, whatever. That's all gonna come into making a better product. If, okay. Even if that product is a, you know, 12 year old. Not a child, a student. Yes, a student. A human. I know, but I'm thinking too, like, <clears throat> this is this is like part of the K through eight special. <laughs> the K through eight special. <laughs> <laughs> This is part of this is part of what makes K through eight education special is that like when they graduate from your junior high, then they're gonna go and like there's so much more world to look at. Like when you're in junior high, yeah, you have such a small world, and you want them to be empowered. Oh, the good to, like, old go days. Explore. Ah, yes. Oh, the good old days. Mm -hmm. I'll show <laughs> you those pictures like this. someday. Oh, yeah, I still want to see. <laughs> yeah, had a really dorky bowl haircut and acne that thought I was bad. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been a glow up, I'll tell you. It's been a glow up. <laughs> All right, uh, not to be too confident. Um, so it does happen peer to peer. It happens parent uh, student, unfortunately, and so that's a that's a deeper conflict to resolve. Obviously, like that's not a happy conversation to have. But as a as a K through eight um, teacher, you are usually a mandated. I think I think for public school, you're a mandated reporter as well, which means that if there's a conflict at home where it escalates to the point of like abuse, like trigger warning here. Yeah. Um, if it escalates <laughs> to the point of abuse, then you are, you know, you're on the line. If that student tells you anything, you ha like by law, you have to tell CPS. Do you uh, have any training on how to handle those situations or is it all through experience? Yeah. No, yeah, you are, you, are, you are trained and you do, you know, every year you do like an electronic thing um, as part of your recertification. Um, but at the same time, like, this is something that we practice at the beginning of the year in our, you know, like at our school, we do it as part of our staff meeting, actually getting the words out there to the okay. student because it is uncomfortable and nobody wants to go through like that emotional pain with the student. You have all the love right. for your students, the <clears> world, right? But like, it is, uh, yeah, it's really hard to do, but that is part of your job. Um, so to get, to know. yeah, it's, it's, it's rough, but that is one of the sources of conflict, obviously like that's, uh, you know. Do kids fight with their parents and are there some really bad parents who do terrible things sometimes? Yeah, oh, of yeah. course. Um, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry to go down that road, audience, but thank you for sticking around. Can you talk about how it's your job to help student enhance positive behavior and not necessarily punish them for bad behavior as a consequence of conflict? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anybody out there watching, uh, <clears throat> did you ever get in trouble <laughs> growing up? Like, did you ever do anything that was out of line that your, that your parents, teachers, administrators didn't like? And so you got punished in some way. And then, was that punishment actually effective? Did it actually do anything? Did it make you want to change the behavior? Did it just make you feel like a worse person? Like, anybody out there get a detention before? Please, <gasps> let us know. I got in detention once. What did you do? I left the classroom to drink water too many times. It's so like, like, because you were going <laughs> out of the classroom to drink wine at age nine. No. Probably. Water. Yeah. Patrick. Yeah. So you were getting a, yeah. And so, <laughs> and so you, know, you got a detention. Mm -hmm. And that taught you not to get water? I, I don't even point. know what that taught me. I was like, I guess I just can't leave the classroom that much. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I didn't I'm gonna, learn anything from it, honestly. I'm going to go out on a limb and say... I was also good at 
Yeah, that's that's easy to so, believe. Yeah, I believe yeah. you. Um, yeah, so, like, what does that actually teach a student? Like, well, one, to fear authority. Yep, um, uh, yeah. We're t- we'll go back to this, like, student-centric, teacher-centric mm-hmm. classroom model again. And All the time. Okay, you... We, we, we've mentioned punk rock between us a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, I very much, like, I'm 29 years old. I grew up on, like, old punk. If anybody out there, like, please, musical preferences. I know that this is not pedagogy itself, but this comes back, I promise. Um, if anybody listen to punk, I want, I want your band recommendations in the comments. <laughs> That's, this is the power of social networking right here. This is the power of social networking. Yes. Um, yeah. But, like, I, I grew up on punk rock, and so, like, when I saw that people were just, like, or the teachers were giving out detention, I'm like, I'm never going to be that kind of person that, like, one, would become a teacher, because pff, that's authority. Um, <laughs> and never be that one that just, you know, like, disciplines students for just being themselves and for doing what they want to do. And now that I'm a teacher, like, I so totally Patrick. get it. I totally get it. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, but, like, okay. Now, now we're preaching this idea of the student-centric classroom. Correct. And the old-school teacher-centric classroom is very authoritarian. Authoritarian or authoritative? I think both work, but I like authoritarian better. Okay, it's more, it's way more authoritarian. Um, and so it is very, like, eyes up on me. Yep. I am the center of attention here. I have all the wisdom, and you can contribute nothing. And if you're getting nothing out of this, like, you know, tough luck, you still got to sit here in silence. Right. And so that is, like, that's still the institution. Nowadays, like if you're giving discipline, right, whether that is a detention or what, however you want to do it, like usually the discipline should involve some kind of like betterment of that, that student, hopefully. And you, you've never given any formal discipline, correct? The, 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 your students want to see you after class. If mine see me after class, they're in trouble or they're yeah, at Starbucks. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. 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 I've never, yeah. I'm trying to think, like discipline is a hard yeah. thing to like. Black and white in higher ed. I don't think I've disciplined anybody for anything. No. Okay. Oh, well, I caught somebody plagiarizing once and I reported that, it. Yeah. Okay. So it's a little bit of, actually, it's kind of a conflict resolution as well in a very different way. Let's but. talk, yeah, let's talk about that and, and I'll, I'll wrap this up and then yeah. bring it over to you. Um, so yeah, the discipline should like involve some kind of betterment of the students, whether that means like they're investigating something about how like their actions can impact the world or what it's cheesy but it like it gets the point across um either way like now yeah just being the original question was something like how do you make sure discipline how do you make sure that you are disciplining students to be more positive as a consequence of their negative actions and not just like punishing them so punishment versus positive reinforcement to fix negative actions yeah so i think the the best example of this is um if there's repeated behavior, like, cause every, everybody messes up once. Everybody goes oh, and gets I like, fuck up all the time. yeah, of course. And like, I just did. I said, fuck twice. Willie, if you're still listening out there, way to counter. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's all right. So like everybody messes up. Like I, everybody's like turned in their homework later or, or done something rude without realizing it. Yeah. And especially when you're a, you know, a teenager, like, you don't have the sophistication necessarily, or you're still developing the sophistication and social skill to think about more than yourself. I'm still developing social skills for that. For right real. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're in this together. <laughs> um, so it's, it's understandable. So you got to look out for the patterns of, of the students who are... 762, you liar! <laughs> Not that bad! <laughs> Uh, I love you. All right. That's good. Uh, I give up. <laughs> appreciate you. Appreciate it, Willie. Anyway, so everybody messes up is what this comes back to. Everybody messes up. Everybody, everybody does. forks up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so if it's repeated, then we want to have more of an intervention. And if it's like coming from a place of like... Are you going to give me an intervention? <clears throat> <laughs> winky face. <laughs> so, um... So, all right, so everybody messes up. If it's repeated, that's when we get involved. And that's like, I don't know, like, I feel like detentions or formal punishment are going to be effective if it is a one-time thing that you know is really bad. If somebody's like, I've had, you know, like my seventh grade boys this year are really aggressive. They're, they're, they're rough with each other. Oh, what a shocker. Yeah, I know. Like, wow, teenage Whoa. boys being like aggressive and <laughs> overly territorial. Yeah, like that happens. And so like, if it's, if it's very one-sided... Like, I've had to give detentions for that. Whatever. It happens. Yeah. Um, and so, in that case, that might be an effective way to use... Like, you are saying with your actions, hey, we don't do this here. Yeah. 
there's no like positive way that this could happen. Don't do it again. Yeah. Um, but for the for the students who um, it seems more like a cry for help or attention or something, that's when we're like we have to think about them more complexly, right? Right. And so that's when we would do what we call a SSR or a student success. Ah, oh, what does the R stand for? I think that's it. I think probably R's are usually report, right? Student success. Or research. Eh, not, not, it's not, it's not research over here, but I think it's something, it's, it's we're doing SSR. And that's, you know, we'll get the teachers together and the parents and the student themselves and we'll talk about like, hey, so again, seek first to understand, then to be understood, right? So like, this is a formal way to do the seek first to understand. Okay. What's going on in that student's life that's making them behave in such a way that they're picking fights with their classmates, or they're not turning their homework in, or that like, everything seems to be a cry for, that's what we want to get to the bottom too. Okay. That's, again, that's way more common, but that requires that you get off of the teacher-centric thought where, oh, that student right. is doing something to me because they're disobedient. Right. Right? We have to be, like, concerned with the student's success more than anything. And, I don't know, it does take more work, honestly. Like, yes. Of course it does. That's, yeah. that's a, a big theme with this, like, with this series, I feel like. Yeah, with been, progressive teaching? Yeah, that it does take work to yeah. be a good teacher or professor or instructor, whatever you're doing. It does take thought. Yeah, I think in one of the first episodes you mentioned, like, that you have to call yourself on your own bullshit, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to let yourself know when you're not doing a good job at yeah. your job. I think and when you could be doing it better. Like the assessment episode? I think that was. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, a while ago. That's a common thing. Yeah, we've been doing this a long time. Oh. <laughs> like two months ago. Damn. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's... That's what we're that's what we're coming with. It is all yeah. for the success of the student in the long term. Yeah. That's the purpose of all this. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, <sighs> okay. You mentioned should we thank our sponsors? This, yeah. <laughs> today's today's episode is brought to you by kale quinoa salad. It's still it in Kayleen's so teeth. <laughs> and in my sockets too. It's also that's, in my face. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thank. When we actually get real sponsors, that'll be a, a real if thing. If you want to sponsor PH, let us know. Yep. We will happily take your money, unless um. No, well, we'll think of reasons. Yeah. All right, so you mentioned a thing a little bit ago. A, a story about uh, conflict resolution, but mm -hmm. at the at the college level. Correct. Uh, so Go I have, it. yeah, so there's like multiple different tiers of conflict types that you can have within higher ed. You can have that as an instructor, you need to potentially take responsibility for. And I'm going to include one that doesn't necessarily fit in the classic instructor realm, and that's the graduate student role. Mm -hmm. um, so as a graduate student in higher ed, which is probably where you're going to be in a teaching situation, although I know at undergraduate universities, you can also have undergrads teaching undergrads. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of parallel between yeah. those, those roles, so just keep that in mind. Um, you have conflicts between graduate students and material. You have conflicts between graduate students and that. students. And then you have conflicts between graduate students and their mentors. So conflicts between graduate students and material can be, as instructor, you recognize that whatever your students are turning in is false in any way, shape, or form. And you can also, as a conflict of, that need to be resolved as a graduate student, have issues with work that you are doing, um, material that you are producing. So in the situation where you are a graduate student and you're having a conflict because your student is turning in something that you think is falsified, it is also your job to report that. Um, by falsified, like plagiarized, completely or... plagiarized, okay. and like in the situations where I found plagiarism, and I'm sure a lot of us have, it's pretty obvious. And like, I want the student to succeed, but part of their success relies on them knowing that they have to put in the work and they have to ask themselves mm -hmm. to perform as well as they possibly can. Um, and if they can't do that, then maybe the situation isn't perfect for them. So, just really quickly, it is your job to report all of that, and it is a conflict, and it does need to be resolved. How do you politely call somebody on plagiarizing? I don't. I'm not polite about it. I'm professional about it. Okay. So that's one of those situations where I don't need to, again, I don't need to establish my authority like an asshole, but I basically send the student an email and I said, um, you know, like, hey, I found, I was able to copy and paste this. Here's the resource that I found it from. Mm -hmm. I CC the instructor on it. I photocopied all of their work. Um, and I was like this is plagiarism, the end. And I let some the instructor report it as necessary. But as a grad student, that's a conflict that you have to resolve. Just deal yeah. with it. Like, it's not fun, but it's part of your job. And it's really, really critical to the integrity of not only, like, the scientific institution as a whole from, like, a philosophical perspective. Yeah. Um, but for that student's own success. So. Yeah. 
wah, 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 wah. Th but you this have is, to do it. This is less of the how to manage conflict, but like at your level, what is plagiarizing? Like taking an entire chunk, taking an idea, um, or taking like a certain amount of lines. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, what counts? So this, this is just me being curious. This has nothing to do with. No, yeah, that's a good question. So there's actually a couple of um, websites. I can't remember what some of them are called, but where you can. Remember, like, Turnitin? Turnitin.com. Okay. Yeah, Turnitin.com is a good example. So, um, they have, like, a a slew of papers written on certain topics. Just one slew? Just a slew. <laughs> Just one slew. Is that more a, or less than a, a cornucopia? A slew. It's, it's on par with the cornucopia. More, more or less than an ass ton. Because I feel like that it's is a... It's a shit ton of papers. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, we have one shit ton. <laughs> one slew. So, <laughs> Sorry. 763? Something like that? I'm giggling um, too much. <laughs> anywho... Um, and it's anywhere from, like, a sentence to, Patrick, <laughs> <Sorry>. go home. <laughs> like, <laughs> can't take you anywhere, Pat. <laughs> <Like, laughs> <Sorry>. Patrick's drunk. <laughs> uh, continue talking. This is interesting. Anyway, um, so plagiarism can be anywhere from a sentence <laughs> to a whole paragraph. <laughs> Do you see what I have to deal with? Dan, Dan, I don't get paid enough for this. Dan. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what he's laughing about. I'm so funny. Honest. I'm so funny. I'm so glad you think you're so funny. I'm so funny. Okay. Anywho. So, turnitin.com is a slew of papers that they probably check from. Yes, it is a slew of papers. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Another Go ahead. source of conflict with grad students and material is you creating material. So, as a grad student, you're supposed to, like, write papers and create content and do that kind of crap, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you and your boss have a conflict with what you want to write, you need to also consider taking that to a conflict resolution office, as we mentioned earlier. But keep in mind that that's also a source of conflict. It's not just you and your boss, it's you and your material, potentially. Um, and that can be material that you're making with, you know, anybody else. It can be like another peer or a co-author, your PI, group projects um, and classes. So just keep in mind that conflict doesn't have to necessarily be person to person in order to get an outside or an external source involved. Yeah. It can be, you know, you and material as well. That can also create conflict. Can you, and you can also outsource your ability to resolve that conflict. Can you give an example? So I'm, I'm thinking like, when, when you say stuff like that, it's like a, you, <clears throat> made, you made your content, you made, say, a lecture. Yep. Um, and there's a discrepancy with like whether something should be included or not that, that's what i think so of there's, where... there's that and there's also like let's say i made a lecture and someone said hey can i borrow your lecture as an outline to make oh, my lecture right. and they just okay. completely use your own lecture and call okay. it theirs that's a conflict of interest with material okay i see so it can All be right. it can be twofold it can be like someone either just took your lecture and used it and called it their own or you are having a conflict with what information to include in a lecture okay both of those are conflicts with material Hey, we have a, a, a viewer from Iraq. Oh, What's hi. Up? Hey. Hey. Sorry uh, for the weird timing. I know it must be. Hey, ask me what the most important part of comedy is. Timing. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's because because I'm funny. That's why I know that. You are funny. All right. Um, I'm not funny. Other sources of conflict um, in higher ed are going to be obviously between you and your students. And reiterating again, you can't do anything really with the exception of if the conflict that you're seeing within a student of yours is going to interfere with the education or safety of other students then you can get involved you can't get involved if someone's just kind of a jerk you can't get involved if you think someone's just being a little rude um and you definitely cannot go to that student and say would you like to talk i feel like you're having issues you absolutely in no way can do that. You are not, nope, nope. So conflicts in higher ed have to come to you and then you have to outsource people to handle them. You are literally, as a graduate student in higher ed, just the middle man or woman. Yeah. So um, that's kind of what I really want to nail home because if you try and resolve a conflict on your own and you are not trained to do it, not only is your on the line, but you're also putting potential university on the line. So, nope. Okay. Nope. Nope. I, Don't even try. Remember, Outsource it. Um, when I was an undergrad, I, I was trained as a conflict mediator. 
But I had to be very clear, like, in what role I was acting. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when I was also an RA, which is why I mentioned all the RA stuff earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to be very clear, like, all right, right now I'm working as an intern for the school um, within my major, which was sports medicine. So, like, clearly I wouldn't bring them to the, like, to the clinic to go do conflict resolution. We would have to go to, like, a particular office. Okay. So, like... There are, there are ways to do conflict resolution if you're interested in doing that outside of your role as a graduate student. Yes. Um, but, like, that's, we're not going to talk about how to do that. It's just, like, there, that does exist in, like, a realm outside of science education. Yes. But if you are a master's student or a PhD student, your job is to teach content in ideally a very progressive way because you've watched all nine episodes of PH. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're actually qualified to resolve conflicts. You are qualified to let people know of their resources to solve mm -hmm. their conflicts. Yep. Um, and then you can also have conflicts between um, students and PIs or principal investigators or bosses. Um, thankfully, this is actually really funny timing. Amy just joined um, uh, this person. She's a we were we worked together, we worked on a paper and a project, blah 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 blah. That's way cool. Anyway, it's super cool. No, yeah. Our our paper's like finally kind of sort of coming together, which is like a godforsaken miracle. Um, <laughs> Good <laughs> um, adjectives. Yeah, All actually right. side note, Amy, I went upstairs and talked to Andrew uh, last week and he just looked at me and he's like, Your protein's a pain in the ass and I was like, Yes, it is. Your protein's a pain in the ass. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so you can have conflicts between you and your PI or your boss. Um I have not because in my lab, we don't have filters um, and we're usually very honest for better or for worse. And so you just kind of resolve conflicts by not having conflicts because you don't hide anything. But however, I do have friends who have pretty severe conflicts with their PIs and as a consequence, they have had to bring conflict resolution in. Mm -hmm. And what, what that office essentially does is they sit down with your PI and the graduate student and they ask like what the source of conflict is and they also create a plan. Like they actually lay out steps to resolve certain conflicts and you have to go and meet with them like once you know a week or like twice a month or something like that and see mm -hmm. if you're following the plan to resolve your conflict. Um, I would also encourage you as a graduate student that if you are seeing severe conflicts with your principal investigator early in your academic career, to seriously consider switching labs. And this is kind of a bold thing to say, um, but keep in mind that you want someone who's gonna be on your team and you know be your cheerleader for your scientific career. And if you can't find that early, yep. it's probably not gonna get any better. Um, so conflict resolution can also look like literally changing labs. Um, and you may wanna do that before it gets so bad that you can't do it anymore. But, um, again, you can use, um, outside sources to help resolve your conflicts. How, how common is it, do you think, to have, I mean, we mentioned the, we mentioned the, uh, like this whole trending thing on Twitter this week. Um, so, yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good luck. Good luck in your yeah. class. Sleep up. Thanks for hanging. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. sleep. It's wildly important. Yes. Um, how common do you think is conflict between PI and student? Because, again, from what I know, having not done uh doctoral work mm -hmm. um and my my relationship with my like instructors in grad school like just getting my master's it was a really short time it was a, it was a one and a half year program yeah um was pretty light i feel like i don't have the relationship that a lot of people talk about their pi with yeah you probably don't um so <clears throat> how common are conflicts how past the just like eh, i gotta do some some extra work or we have a disagreement how how common do you think um, like severe conflict to the point where you would want to switch labs because you did mention I mean like yeah and, and you're a proponent of this I, it sounds like yeah I am a proponent of it so I am a six-year grad student so long that's so many years no, it's all the years um and I have seen everything from students just mastering out because conflicts were too bad mastering out Mm -hmm. What's that? What does that mean? All right, so let me explain the term mastering out. So um, it has a negative connotation with it, but it shouldn't. It doesn't always necessarily have to be negative. Um, but in a, if you go into a PhD program and you get to a certain point where you either don't think you're going to be able to get your PhD or you don't want to get your PhD anymore and you've passed your qualifying exams, you can leave with a master's degree. Okay. That's called mastering okay. out, which is why people say like not all master's degrees are created the same. Because you went into a program yes. pursuing a master's mm -hmm. degree, but 
but someone can also get a master's degree because they just didn't finish their PhD program. Mm -hmm. Those are two very different types of masters. Yeah. Um, so okay. it's called mastering. Okay. Um, and while it's fine to master out, um, and there are still some benefits to mastering out, um, if you really do want to get your PhD, the better option is to switch labs. Mm -hmm. So I have seen conflicts when they haven't been resolved properly and with someone just completely leaving their PhD program. Um, and with the attrition rate of PhD programs being 50%. Holy cow. Which means that. Wow. 50% of doctoral students will drop out in some capacity before they finish their PhD. Man, we'd have twice the amount of doctors if this didn't happen. Yeah, I think a big source of it is conflict resolution. Okay. Um, which is why, like, I know it's kind of, like, taboo to talk about changing labs, but I think what's you... worse is completely <laughs> dropping out of graduate school. Yeah, you know? plus, it's if like... you learn anything on pedagogy hypothesis, nothing's taboo here. Yeah, literally We have all taboo. the, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Live English is not my mother language, so sometimes I don't get what you mean, oh, but I'm generally... Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, sometimes I talk too fast and sometimes Pat talks too yeah, fast. Yeah, I'm working on it. We are, we're trying. Thank yeah. you. We appreciate you spending your very late night slash early morning yes. <laughs> with us. And yeah. good luck in your class tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so conflicts happen all the time. Is all the time. It, you think it's a big source for the attrition rate of PhDs? I, I yeah. want to say I completely agree with you. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, that's what gets people to quit jobs, too. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it, why wouldn't you also, you know, qu is that fair to say quit? Drop out? I think drop out's more accurate. Okay. Is, I mean, why wouldn't it cause you to drop out? This insane, this like extra source of stress and it seems like people hate you or it seems like you're just not getting along with everybody. Of course. Like, of course you would drop out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah. So um, don't be afraid to switch labs as a source of conflict resolution as well. Is the whole point of that story um, because a bad relationship with a PI is a bad graduate career. Is there any other like negative... Negative thing. I'm thinking like because a lot of academics can maybe be, um, what's the word we want to say? Uh, heavily influenced by a small group of um, men. Maybe they talk to each other and say like, "Hey, this student, you don't want anything to do with this student." I I had them and they, oh, like bad mouthing. Yeah. Does that is that a huge threat? Is that? Um, I know we're getting like into the weeds. On we a are getting into the weeds, thing. but I think it's a good thing to talk I about. Just, it's really important. I have questions. Especially because, yeah, no, the science community has a lot of graduate students in it. Um, so I think it's important to talk about. Um, you can get bad mouthed, but I would say you will only get bad mouthed if you also do bad work. Okay. So, because remember, again, you're a graduate student, you're there for research purposes. So... If you are in severe conflict with your PI and you're also not producing good work, you could have a situation like that. However, if you seek out conflict resolution and then try and switch labs, you'll have somebody else who's on your team batting yeah. for you. Um, and it's important, too, to recognize, for better or for worse, that if you do have to switch labs as a source of conflict resolution, you got to kind of bust ass when you get into a new lab yeah you know like you gotta you gotta make it known that you want to succeed and you want to be here because you want to you know a second star and you <clears throat> you know it's not that you're not a good grad student it's that you had a poor relationship yeah um and so that's like the one downfall but it really shouldn't be a downfall it should be more of like a positive step forward because you now have a situation where you will presumably enjoy your graduate career with somebody more so so on, on, it just sucks. To the, get whole, on, the whole situation sucks a little bit. There's no two ways about it. Like, to get on the opposite side, there are people who have really good relationships with their PIs too, right? You, you do. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> like, that's, my boss is rad. Yeah. Cool. Like, usually. I mean, sometimes I don't like work from Yeah. But, so how did, you, yeah. how did you get a good relationship with your PI? I mean, because you're, I mean, for all intents, you're a nice person. I'm not too shabby. <laughs> you're like, good. I have my moments. Um, and I'm, but you know, not everything is butterflies and rainbows and yep. like you've had to... You know, you have a life. You are a person. Yeah. So how do you get a good... Rela I feel like to talk about conflict resolution implies a conflict, but we should also probably have talked about, like, having a good... Setting good relationships up. Yeah. So, yeah, as Pat mentioned, I am... I don't want to say lucky, because I... Hey, I hate that word. Um, but I am fortunate to have a good working relationship with my PI. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with just honesty. Um when you're honest with your boss about your expectations and your abilities, they don't have to wonder and they don't have to, 
project things onto you or vice versa. Um, so a conflict that I've had in my graduate career, um, I think I talked about this in Evenings of Enology and not Peach. I can't remember. I don't think I've talked about it here yet. But um, um, so at one point in my grad career, we're going to have to take a little story tangent for a second. I um, love story tangents. Story time. Um, so I was a third year graduate student and I moved here from Washington State. And I came to California and I was like, this is awesome. I'm in California now. No one knows me. I'm single. I can do whatever I want. And then I met my boyfriend at the time, like six days off the plane. And we were together <laughs> for like over three years. And so as soon as I moved to California, I basically met my partner and we moved in together not too long after. Fast forward like three-ish years, like three years and a quarter or whatever. Um, and we split, we, we parted ways. And when I left him, I was like, okay, I have a dog and I need to find a place for me and my dog to live, which is impossible in California. Like, good freaking luck. Um, and my rent almost, it went up like 150%. Yeah. <laughs> so my rent went up substantially. I now had to find a place for my dog and me. And I wanted to live by myself. And my car broke down at the same time. So I had to buy a new car. And a bunch of other stuff happened that was really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. And so I basically had... A lot of shit hit my fan all at once and make a huge mess. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do financially. I can't make this work. I can't focus in lab. And this was a big conflict that I had at the time because, like, my experiments were failing. I couldn't focus. It was, just, it was a wreck. And so I went to my boss and I had, not weasel, but I had, like, worked my way into a position of doing wine chemistry at a winery. Um, and I said, Hey, boss man, <laughs> um, which we actually do call him boss man sometimes. Um, Hey, I can't focus in lab. I can't make my finances work. Um, I need to take the second job in order for me to just like make rent. Cause right now I'm trying to live on like 150 bucks a month and that's just not happening. And he looked at me and he was like, can you make it work? And I was like, yep, I can make it work. I will work Tuesday through Saturdays and I'll work at the winery on Mondays. And he was like, Okay, cool. Just get your work done, basically. And so that whole example is because that was a huge conflict with me. Like, I can't pay my bills. I need to find another source of income. Having a second job in graduate school is not ideal. <laughs> no. But in that situation, the alternative is being so stressed out that I couldn't get anything done. And so... By being really honest with my boss and by laying a very truthful foundation where he didn't have to project things onto me or guess what I was doing or wonder at all, we've built a relationship where he can trust me to do work because I've never misled him. You know, I've, I've misinterpreted data before, let's be honest. Yeah. But that happens with every scientist, right? But as far as like, I want to do this and I'm getting this thing done and this is when it will be done by unless, you know, it's science, so shit hits the fan again sometimes. Um, but if I say I'm going to do something or if I'm working on something, I am working on it. And so honesty is the best policy. I feel like you learn that stuff in like movies when you're three, but it's true. And it still applies yeah. to grad school. Like that's how to create a good working relationship with your boss is to not make your boss wonder what you're doing. This makes sense. Fundamental. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good story. I didn't know that about, mm -hmm. I didn't, I hadn't heard that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a real fun six months of my life. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I'm a I'm trying to do the math like that. It must have been actually kind of recently. Yeah, that was November of 2016. You're a badass. Yeah. Whew, yeah. November of 2016 to, like, November of that's rough. 2017 was a long flipping year. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that's rough. Yeah, that was rough. Uh, is there more pedagogy to do here? <laughs> <laughs> is there more teaching to do? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think... I think I addressed all the scenarios that can cause conflicts in higher ed, um, the resources that you have to address them, which were the ones that we mentioned kind of right out of the gate at the front of the episode. Um, and I think we clarified how higher ed and K through eight are different. You yep. know, you can, you need to be involved in K through eight and you absolutely cannot be involved in higher ed. Um, and also I was really, 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 really broke for a while in college. That's, that's the takeaway. I'm, my messages are blowing up right yeah, now. You got I'm sorry. Friends. Well, probably my family texts. They're good people too, oh. though. Nice. Um, we have a little bit of an audience here. Let's, let's actually say hi. Hey, everybody. Hey. Um, hi. Hey, we're, so if you ha are just tuning in, we've been talking about conflict resolution, like how to, you know, play nice with <laughs> other kids. Broke. Yeah. Among <laughs> other things. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, coming from coming from you all, have you ever had those oppor- opportunities? Those circumstances where you've had conflict either with like your PI, with other students, with students that you teach, between students. With material? Yeah, with material. I, yeah, I learned so many new things today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stoked. I didn't, I had no idea that these things, like, I, I had not thought about it in that way before. Like, it's, conflict it's, with material. It's weird up here, man. There's yeah. Well, weird shit goes on up Yeah, here. your hair's different today. <laughs> you had to point that That's out. That's what you took away from up here mm-hmm. is my hair. I was talking about my yeah. brain, how like, oh. this weird stuff goes on up in my brain. It's but yes, my part is on the other side today. Thank That's you, Patrick. Different. That's different. Uh, cool. Well, for those of you, for those of you who are just tuning in, thank you very much. Uh, I think we might call it here. Yeah. So if that's the case, hey, you can check out the remainder of this episode on Nexus, which is the Psy Community's YouTube channel. Um, it is linked down in all the, all the things. Go and follow us on all of our things. It's at Kmarison on the Insta- Instagrams. Hey, you look beautiful, according to Nikki. Right. It Thanks, like. Nikki. You look beautiful, too. Hey. Thanks. Owen. Owen, hey, You look beautiful. Hi. Owen's like, mm, no, no. he comfy. Owen, come on, bud. Anyway, uh, yeah, go follow K. Marison, C-A-I-M-A-R-I-S-O-N. I'm so proud got of you. Got it right this time? You got it right. Good. Yeah. And then I'm, don't follow me on anything. Uh, and follow me on, Kelly on, on Twitter. On Twitter. I'm trying to, trying to do the Twitter. I just crossed a, a hundred Twitter Are you doing peoples. the Twitter thing now? I like Twitter because you can actually like talk to people and be real rude to each other. It's great. No. Um, you come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> There's significantly more fucks on on Twitter, uh, which is my first F word of this of this show. I think. <gasps> oh my we're god! Finally, I'm so proud of you. We're finally back into it. Yay. Yeah, we look energetic because it is two o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon here, yeah, not two a.m. Yeah. So thank you. And Patrick's coffee is currently. I'm consumed. I'm approximately thirty seven percent caffeine by volume. I think at this point. Pretty I stole worse. that from a really good YouTube channel called MedLife. I have to show you... Okay, I have, a, I have a fun video to show you from... Okay, recommendation for this week. If you are in grad school or can recognize that humor, go look up on YouTube right now from this awesome YouTube channel called Neurotransmissions. You see what they did there? It's called Post Doc Me Now. It's a music video they Post put out. It's so good. I'm gonna, I'll show it to you. This is, it's so good. It's so good. But anyway, yeah, go and, and like all the things. Uh, I am laughing too. Good. <laughs> We're good for Forget something. an emoji. <laughs> we're What's we're up? good for something. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and all that. Okay, bye. Bye.